Good morning, Kelly. Good morning. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Is it sunny out? Maybe we can actually go outside today. She's like, no pets. I want pets. I want pets. So many ships. <laughs> so my dad came down today to have a little chat with me at the, uh, the barrier and he was asking how come I wasn't making videos. My response to him was I'm not doing anything at all worth sharing with people. I'm lazing around, <laughs> I'm pacing floors, I'm disgruntled like everybody else. Nothing at all worth sharing with anybody. And then he pressed it. You should be making videos. You should be getting more content out there. It's catty. Oh catty face. <gasps> Hi, derp. And of course me thinking that, uh, you know, I know what's going on. Nobody wants to see what I'm doing because it's not anything. So there's no point right now. But then that got me thinking. Normally the video making process, like the filming and the editing, mainly the filming is a more uh, personal process for me. Like I used to get Brandon to like go do stuff <laughs> while I was shooting because I just wasn't comfortable with him being in the van while I was doing it. And it had nothing to do with external circumstances. Like I'm sure I tried to make it sound. It had everything to do with me and my comfort level and my experience level. So dad got me thinking about all this stuff and I hate, hate to say it, I hate to say it, the old man is right. If I'm not making videos, it has nothing to do with anything externally, as much as I might try to push it off that way, it has everything to do with whether or not I'm getting my crap together and making a video. So you know what? Damn you, dad. I'm getting my crap together. I'm making a video. Hate it when he's right. Okay, so here's the current setup. This is my brother's room. This is what I'm allowing myself to use of it because I'm not exactly moving in and taking over his room. So everything else is not mine to mess with. Obligatory cat, because everybody likes to see Callie. Callie. Yeah. Hi. Not touching anything unnecessarily because it's not my room. It's not my space. This, this is kind of my space. So the yoga mat I still haven't got to. The ukulele I still haven't got to. See, it's not that I don't have stuff to do. For some reason, I just can't get myself to do it. And then we have the kitchen. Yeah. Priorities, coffee, oatmeal, plastic gloves, because you know, those go with everything right now. Other kitchen stuff, coffee. Oh, I gotta finish making that. I love this thing. This thing's amazing. Uh, yeah, I bring my plates up. I gotta get that upstairs actually. And that's about it. Kitchen. Then we have the work desk. Got my switch, a little display monitor, iPad, lighting, camera mount. See, I'm ready. <laughs> and that is for that. And then outside, I have a cooler. So if I can direct your attention over there, you see those two pillows? Callie started digging at the plastic. I knew it was gonna happen, because she does it on the glass, and she'll do the, but the glass is glass and not plastic. So I wasn't sure if she was gonna try to like carve ribbons into it. So far so good, but if I hear the, the sound, I, I go running to make sure, because we're doing really good, but we're, we're not done yet. So no ribbons through the plastic, not with Shane's door like right over there. <laughs> Hmm. Coffee. Coffee plunger coffee in my Stay Wild Camping Child mug. It's still hot. It's just... So as the days have been going by, I've become more and more aware of exactly how lucky I am. I had the opportunity to come home. My parents, my family, could help me out that way. I was in Alberta literally getting my resume ready to start sending out. I think I even sent it out uh, to one company who I knew was hiring and all this really started to happen, you know? Like really started to affect everyone's day-to-day -day lives. And then the price of oil dropped and that pretty much sealed it for me <laughs> because Alberta's economy is directly related to the price of oil. I saw an out, not just an out, it was the sign that it was time to take an out <laughs> if I had one available and GTFO, so that's what I did. But not everybody who is in similar circumstances to me had anywhere to go. 
or had that opportunity. So I've just been more and more aware lately of how fortunate I am for my current circumstances. On one hand, it had felt like a bit of a failure having to run back home to my family. But on the other hand, I am fortunate enough that I could run back home to my family. When the walls felt like they were starting to close in, and I know living in a van, that probably sounds really weird, but it's more like the lack of ability to go out and do stuff. When the walls started squeezing in, I kind of sat back and reminded myself that this isn't a bad situation. Generally, it's all a bad situation. But me, I am in the most ideal situation possible under the circumstances of my lifestyle and my work and stuff like that. I had somewhere to go and safe people to be with. And I know that's not the case for everybody. There's a lot of people living van life or living nomad style lives who are just <laughs> hooped right now, which is the nicest way to say it, because everything's closed, all of the resources are closed, and nobody's ever lived through something like this, so there's no guidance, there's no, here's how you get through it. There's just everybody hanging on for dear life, trying to make it one day at a time. Some of the stuff I've been reading on the Facebook groups I'm on are just heartbreaking, as people struggling with no end in sight at the moment. Everyone knows there is an end, and it should be soon, but it's hard to see that when you don't know where you can dump your tank. You don't know where you can fill your tanks. You don't know where you're going to get a shower. You're constantly being told to move because your your very existence is borderline illegal at this point. And yeah, I just, that's what I was afraid of. That's why I got out of there. But people are still in that situation. So a little bit reflecty lately because now I have the time to actually go through and read all this stuff and catch up on the stories that I missed while I was driving uh, and even before because I spent five days running around like a madman trying to get everything ready and uh, stopped catching up on everything so I've been going back and reading all that stuff I missed and I am so lucky and I'm very thankful that I had a place to go and I'm very thankful that my parents took me in and went through all the effort of setting up that. Not everybody would do that. Not everybody is doing that. My parents did that so I'm so thankful for that and yeah um, I haven't been doing much because eh, still getting used to this still getting used to even just being home I haven't been here in two and a half years and last time I was here there was an end date so you don't settle in like it was Christmas <laughs> you do Christmas things so it's just taken a little bit to adjust and kind of get used to that this is the new norm that obviously won't always be the norm but just the house and being in Nova Scotia for the foreseeable future anyways um just until things start picking back up but even then we could be going into a massive recession right now so who knows <laughs> I do know that I'm gonna be making a better effort to like get comfortable here and relax. I find it very hard to get into the fun stuff when I'm not settled into a place so I'm settling in. Not that I hadn't physically moved in. It's a mental switch. If you're going from like fight or flight slash survival list mode to rest and digest, there's a switch. Actually, it's more like a gear shift. It's not a, it's not a little flick of the switch. It's like a shift that down into settle in mode and then get to all the other stuff that you don't, you don't do when you're in survival mode or, or fight or flight mode. So that's where I'm at right now. I wish I had more of an update for you, but I am working on a video. Uh, it's gonna take a bit more time to get ready, but uh, I think it's gonna be pretty good. So I will talk to you guys soon. Um, I guess the only other thing I could show you would be my super awesome island setup on Animal Crossing, but you know, nobody really wants to see that. <laughs> it's a good thing I put time into, into that instead of productive things. But other than that, yeah, that's it for right now. Um, the video should be up in a couple days. I've actually got dad reviewing a few things for me right now. So I will talk to you guys soon. Take care, stay healthy, wash your hands, keep six feet apart, try not to go insane, and uh, yeah, I'll see you soon. This is Callie, meeting McLovin. McLovin hasn't been a word yet. The first time in two and a half years. Oh no. Oh, I heard that too. Yeah, her eyes just like <laughs> mugshot. Oh, there it is. You can't really see it, but there it is. Ah! She doesn't quite seem to understand the plastic. No, I have to like I don't get it. <laughs> she can see them, but she cannot smell them, and she knows the plastic is there, but she doesn't quite understand what it is. <laughs> right, Derpy? Okay. Mm -hmm. oh, do you want to go back that way? Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> ha ha.
Hi, are you okay? <clears throat> oh, you're good. Yes, you're good. Baby steps, baby steps. <laughs> no, that's what we don't want her to do. <laughs> Count, no, uh-uh. <laughs> are you derpy? <gasps> Derp. Shane is about to do a resource drop, let's call it. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Ready? Yeah. Right here. Oh, I got them. <laughs> Thank you, Shane. <laughs> we got them. We have Tostitos now. Winning. You are the man. Thank you so much. I didn't have the bed okay. so much time went by. I didn't either. <laughs> right. Say goodbye to the interwebs. Bye, internet. You're a rock star. Thank you for letting me film you. I'm kidding.